you may notice that some structures drawn in this core, such as the one here on the left, has more than one proper uh, Lewis structure that can be drawn for it. When multiple Lewis structures can be drawn for a particular compound, we say this compound has resonance contributors, such as the one shown on the screen. The true Lewis form for this compound that we see on the screen is a combination of the two resonance contributors that we can draw for it. And in fact, the true form of this compound is known as the resonance hybrid, also shown here. The resonance hybrid is a hybrid of all of the different resonance structures that can be drawn for the compound. And the Lewis structure that we draw for it has a partial negative charge on each of the oxygens because there is a negative charge on one oxygen in one form and one on the other oxygen in the other form. And because these electrons can be delocalized, we can show them as moving throughout the compound. Now, how do we actually show this moving? Well, we use what's known as curved arrow notation. You will see curved arrow notation many times throughout this course, especially when drawing mechanisms. But we're going to introduce it here for showing the resonance inside this, this molecule. The first step in drawing curved arrows for resonance structures is to identify where the source of the electrons is going to be. The source of this electron flow is normally in a place of an electron-rich area in the molecule. Normally this place will be somewhere like a, like a charge or a lone pair. In the case of this nitromethane, we can see that there is a negative charge on this oxygen here. And that is the source of our electron flow. The second step is to circle what is actually going to move. The way we do this in ACE Organic is to hover your mouse over the atom that contains these pushable electrons. Step three involves uh, actually drawing the arrow that designates this electron movement. So the, the way to draw this arrow is by going to the top part of your Marvin sketch screen and clicking on this two electron arrow as shown here. Be careful not to confuse it with the one electron arrow on the right, which is reserved for radical chemistry. For the most of what you're going to see, you're going to involve this two electron arrow. So click on that arrow and start on the atom that you want the arrow to come from. In this case, it is the oxygen with the negative charge. So you click on that atom and then push where you want those, that arrow to go. If you want this to go to the bond, as we see here, pushing these, these electrons towards that nitrogen, we are going from just that oxygen to the bond between the nitrogen and the oxygen. And the way that we designate that, as shown here, is with these two blue parentheses around the atoms that contain the bond where you want the electrons to go. So in this case, we want this lone pair to form a double bond between the indicated nitrogen and oxygen that have the two blue parentheses around it. Always look out for these blue parentheses when drawing your arrows in ACE Organic, because that is where you're, uh, you are indicating to the program where your electron flow is going. So then you just release your mouse, and the arrow pops into place, and that is it. Step four, after you've drawn your arrow, is to draw the resulting Lewis structure from that arrow being drawn. So you can draw that on Marvin Sketch as such. Now that you've drawn the resulting Lewis structure from that arrow movement, you have to check, is what I drew a valid Lewis structure? Because if it's not a valid Lewis structure, you can't draw it. And in fact, this, what we have drawn here is not a valid Lewis structure. We have 10 electrons around this central nitrogen. That's an invalid structure. Therefore, we have to keep going with our arrows. So we have moved a lone pair from the low oxygen to form a double bond. Now we have to move electrons away from that nitrogen to reduce it down to its eight electron octet. Now the pushable electrons that you can move for resonance are going to be double bonds and lone pairs, triple bonds, any type of pi bond or, uh, or a lone pair will move. In this case, there is another double bond on the top part of that nitrogen that can move away from it and go localize itself onto that top oxygen. So the way you designate that, you click your two electron arrow again, start on the bond that you want to move, this, this time it's that bond between the top oxygen and nitrogen, shown with the two blue parentheses, and you localize it onto that top oxygen. Now we draw the resulting uh, Lewis structure from that.
and there is our final compound. So the next step that we do is we check to see, is this a valid Lewis structure? And indeed it is. The top oxygen has a negative charge and the nitrogen has a positive charge, making the overall charge for this nitromethane zero. The ni central nitrogen has, a, has an octet. It doesn't exceed the number of electrons it is allowed to have. Therefore, this is a valid structure. So how do we designate this fully instead of drawing this invalid Lewis structure in the middle? The way we would actually designate this is shown here, where we draw both of those, of those arrows in that same place. Now one other arrow that we use to designate that these are indeed resonance structures of one another is by using this double-headed resonance arrow shown here on Ace Organic. It is a double-headed arrow. It just says that these two structures are indeed resonance structures of one another. And we use this double-headed arrow instead of an equilibrium arrow for one big difference. These atoms are not moving around in space. The atoms are remaining in the exact same place. Uh, they have the exact same 3D representation as they did before the resonance arrow was drawn. All that we have changed is one representation of the electron cloud on those atoms. So that is why we do not draw an equilibrium arrow and instead draw a resonance arrow to show that the atoms remain in the same place. So some mechanics of actually drawing these resonance structures can be shown here. You always want the tail of that first arrow to start on that electron rich part of the molecule. This is called the source. And all of the arrows that you draw for resonance can be only three types. Only the three types shown here, any other resonance arrow that you could draw is going to be invalid. The first type is a non-bonding pair going to an adjacent bond, shown here. This is a vertex to edge transfer. You'll see this taking a lone pair and moving it down to form a bond, as we saw in the first arrow we drew for nitromethane. The second type of arrow is a bonding pair moving to an adjacent atom. This is called an edge to vertex transfer. We saw this as the second arrow that we drew for our nitromethane, going from a bond and localizing onto an atom. The third arrow that we can draw is an edge vertex edge transfer. This involves moving electrons from a pi bond over an adjacent atom and to form another pi bond bound to that same atom we just skipped over. And that is shown here on the screen. You will see this often uh, for resonance, even though we did not see an example of this previously. And this transfer process must continue until all of the building blocks are error free, just as we saw in our nitromethane example. We had to keep moving our arrows to draw a valid Lewis structure. And the head of this last arrow will always point to the electron pair destination, which is known as the electron sink. This is where our electrons will end. And this sink is normally a place that is electron deficient. Sometimes this will be a positive charge. Sometimes this will be an incomplete octet. But it's normally a place that does not have many electrons around it. So these are some of the guidelines for drawing resonance structures and try to keep these in mind when you're practicing resonance.